this gold lane might not be happening. The last theme really of week six the, uh, of the MPL Philippines season 14. Smart Omega versus the NC Pro team. Maganda laban din to guys. Uh, the fact that they took away the Moskov. Uh, again, Roger, I feel like really has uh, fallen out. Uh, oh, they oh, take out the Lunox wow. also. I think they're going to end up having to pick like a Melissa or an, or an Ixia along those lines. Yep, um, is the Claude something you could consider for this kind of lineup? Uh, it's going up against the Harris, but then it's a Justice. Yeah, but that'll be, uh, that'll be their late game option. Uh -huh. Good ban also in the Valentina. Um, so because of the low Yi Faramis ban by Omega, TNC Pro team did, can afford to ban two mages because now Ukir's pool has lessened. Oh yeah. There's, uh, we're, I think we may be out of heroes for Ukir. We still have the Zask available. Um, uh, you call the Claude? Do you know how well I'll look then? Okay, for uh, Ukir, I think the only ones remaining are the uh, Lilia and the Zask, as you mentioned. Jushin also. Jushin. And the Aurora, perhaps? If the Aurora just gone. got banned out. Oh no, it's gone as well. So, what could be the pick? If this is a Grok, then <laughs> I usually see the Lilia. <laughs> yeah, usually. Let's see. What if it's going to be a different kind of mid lane? What if, what if That's it's a, a high loss mid lane? Oh. And we don't see the XP yet? And we're going to go something crazy with the EXP. But I think, yeah, uh, we, they might just go for a traditional mage because they need the. Wait! Maybe. I'm not going to turn off the idea. And if you're calling me crazy for mid-high loss, I mean, come on, we saw Rosa do it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is no, Zask. Oh, I mean, I think other regions have I'm showed okay us the uh, <laughs> mid-high okay. loss. Um, but this, again, is a hero which we've expected or we felt to slowly decrease or really go down in terms of priority. Yeah. So might just be the safer option if you were smart Omega, but for TNC Pro Team now that we are looking for their XP laner. Are they just going to be trapped with a Zask? Ah, uh, excuse me, a Terizla again? Uh-huh. Um, the Terizla is there Ooh. for heads. I kind of like the idea of a Cho EXP for heads. If they're comfortable with uh, pulling that out. Because some lockdown would be great. Uh, oh, why? Let's go. That felt good. Yeah, and... Uh, Again, they needed the lockdown. This does put a lot of pressure, we have to acknowledge, on the Tigreal to survive yep. as long as possible. Yep. But TNC decided to opt for the idea of, okay, if we can't get them through the front-to-back team fight, let's just hope that we can get the Cho to pick off someone, put ourselves in a better position. And so that might mean Heads will be frontlining, might be the one calling the shots, while Escalera's waiting at the wings, and then he'll be coming in uh -huh. with a more counter uh, implosion. Yeah. I think we've seen that kind of uh, play style for t uh, Tigreal users become more and more evident as time goes by, since it kind of really is one of the biggest things or threats that you have to think about when there's a Tigreal. But for right. now, let's head into the action. I cannot wait to see how this goes. Leo and Ingan, it's all yours. It's all ours. Thank you so much, Brigida and Renmar Santa Cruz. Setting up Welcome quite the bout between Smart Omega and TNC in a best of three. Once more, playoff spot up for grabs for the Barangay. Leo and Jose Ingen here bringing you the action. I gotta say, Woo. I don't think it's just mass copium that the panel, the analysts, and we here on desk say TNC, they drafted quite the hell out of that bout. Yeah, I mean. Looking at the lineup of TNC, you know they have a lot of engaged, they have a lot of catch, but I do agree with what uh, Brigida and Renmar was saying that Heads has to be the primary roamer this time, has to be the zoner, the frontliner, to activate Escalera's counter implosion place. As an EXP laner. As an EXP laner. He has to cross the threshold and live in 
Andor use you know, jump. Well, again, here's a response. Okay, oh, we've got the purple buff, but Kaysen goes in. Is he gonna fall down though? Chak with the ring of punishment still survives. Here comes Escalera with a sacred hammer just to save Kazen. The overaggression of TNC wasn't punished Flicker. and head flickers in. Wants oh, to go for Okir, draws the first blood and he will fall down. But heads as well. You know what? One. On an economic scale, if you think about it, an EXP slash roamer given his life to take down the mid laner, which is a secondary core. That's a good deal for TNC. Again, they can keep no, pushing the advantage of Okay, Jay! Okay, Escalera forced to use the flicker there, trying to get Jome. But Jome remains unbothered, still safe. And I do agree, that was a worth it trade for TNC. Heads, ideally, you know Heads is gonna just keep dying, diving, dying, and diving. But Ugir, on the other hand, you can't let that Zask die, especially with the recent adjustments for Zask. You know what, Ian? I'm gonna say it now. As early as two minutes, something tells me Smart Omega pulled a Mega Man, mm. a Rock Man for her Japanese friends. <laughs> they took what they learned from Team Liquid last night, yeah. and they're using it now. Look at the aggression. Uh, they're on the receiving end of that same thing from TNC. Okay, Chuck, no. Look at that! We'll have to walk away now. TNC, this is a different Phoenix army. I mean, we, we're used to seeing go. them dominate the early game, but not up against Omega, who also is known for having a strong start. I mean, in terms of average game duration, they're both a tide. Okay, heads. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here comes a kick, but no follow-up damage. Here comes Endoryu, though. Sorry, we don't follow okay, up. So we get Shadow Kill. Escalera just waiting for the perfect opportunity, but here comes Ryota! Flicker ah, in with a wild charge! Gonna punish heads there! Dominator's ascent as well, as Ryota blocks Lancey's uh, entry. Chaknu running for Lancey! The birthday boy survives! And now the counter attack for the Phoenix army! Here comes the implosion! <laughs> Plus goes in, activated right away with a blazing duet, going right after Ukir. Okay, gonna evade the death though, but here comes the counter attack on Dory. He doesn't have the weak shadow kill. Escalera and Kozen will survive. Not on three minutes. There's not enough damage on Kozen to be able to get away with that and to even deal enough damage to kill anyone. But yeah, uh, just to clarify, it's TNC who's doing Omega what Liquid did to Omega just last night. Yeah, yeah. They watched the replay again. Heads just doing Sanford things <laughs> right before the first minute mark was already in the purple buff of Andoryu. So you know how to beat the barangay is to be super like, aggressive, super aggressive just like TLPH. Just, just get in there. But here's the thing. Fool me once, <laughs> shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And it would be too much to expect a team like SmartMaker to fall for it twice. And now, I think it's safe to say, it's not the same story. Yeah, yeah. Again, three minutes in, four minutes. Second turtle spawning in the lower quarter in about 20 seconds. It's not the same. Omega had a much worse situation against Liquid last night. Yeah, really have a hard time. Especially for Andoryu. Wasn't able to get his... Uh, I, I believe the first three buffs of Andoryu was heavily contested like a Turtle Clash. So this time, Omega also learning from the mistakes of game number two uh, against TLPH. But TNC, again, their snowball potential is high. They have the Nolan. Still 0-0 KDA, but with a proper setup from Escalera, Escalera or a kick from Heads, Give the kills to KZN, TNC can snowball from this. And that's what we've been talking about all weekend long. I think the team that has the easier execution can get results much, much faster. For TNC, it's as simple as you just said. A sacred hammer, a flicker into an implosion, a kick from heads. That's all they need to get going. Omega, though, they got to lay it down from Chaknu. Riyadh's got to get a great wild charge. Perfect lineup for Ukir, then another to finish up. So now check it out, there's a kick! There it is! On to Ryota, he has to flicker out though, survives the clash as TNC works on the turtle. Jack has to use the glorious pathway, gonna zone out Kays in there. Heads soaking up the damage oh. coming in from... Oh! Who's gonna fall down? It's gonna be on to Escalera! Ryota. It's gonna be Andoryu still with the turtle! But a kill for Kazen as he takes down Ryota. That ain't worth it. Omega split him up. And TNC, as aggressive as they were, you can't do that if you're not as focused. Oh! To the top lane, though. It's gonna be a 2 on 1. Andoryu. Andoryu. Watch out, that was fine. He's uh, very elusive, very slippery. Yeah. As you know that he is. But, but you know, Omega, bef uh, during that turtle fight, they had so much crowd control. Apart mm -hmm. from their dual double tank setup, the nightmare response coming in from Ukir forces TNC to just... They can't hide from the brushes That's right. that Heads and Escalera wants to accomplish. They have better combat vision. And implosion from Escalera. Not worth it. Here comes Chakra to the rescue. They got to engage the two tanks, just making sure that their uh, turrets are oh, oh, oh. taken down. Chak, 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 Chak. Oh, Kozen commits a blazing duet. Chakra all of a sudden is gone. 
and what a quick response from TNC. You know what, if they were setting up for a push, I'll tell you it's worth it. But right now, it looks like Omega's ready to defend. Joan is coming to the rescue, and he's going to clear the waves. Wow, look at Smart Omega. The game IQ that's spread across the map, across the board, led by their captain, Chuck Ludamamba. Impressive work. Again, back to TNC's aggressive start. Gamers of all sorts know. Take yeah. it from strategy games, MOBA games, card games. If you're aggressive and you can't pinpoint focus what that is, you're going to lose to the team that is better late game. Yeah. So now, I think TNC's prime has passed. They have to play a different way. They can't just keep throwing bodies at Omega. Yeah, because Omega, they, they are, are really master of trades. I do agree with what you said. Even though Chaknu died, the fact that Jome's turrets up top are still intact means that he has more space. He has, still has the space to outplay Kozen and eventually gain more gold compared to the Claude. That's right. And again, you're not racing against the Claude. You can't do that. Not in the current patch. 1.9.20 has blessed Claude yeah. with a proactive curve. His power spike is out of this world. He's like a he's like a high school student with an IQ of a math genius. And with that said, you can't outrace him. But now he'll real quick is the last turtle spawned up already. Going to the barangay. Another oh, oh, hit, oh, hit, hit. Oh, that was a good zone though coming in from Shaknu. But here comes Escalera on the back line and a kick coming in from Heads. But there's no there's no follow up though. That's why he's gonna be punished. Heads gonna fall down. Here comes Kozin with a blazing duet onto Ukir. Still hasn't popped the Dominator's descent. Now TNC. They had no answer to that trade. I mean, they got an, uh, a turret down bottom, mm -hmm. but heads up play from Chaknu. Just just straight up man-to-man -man defense on Kazen, not letting him sniff even the last turtle. And just as quickly as Omega saw a window of opportunity, they split up. Yeah. They were like, all right, clearly this is our turtle. Jom, go take top lane. Andoru, you go clean up down bottom. We were pushing that initially. But now we can reclaim, and suddenly, look at this, TNC's gold lead, nada, kaput. Yeah, even Andoryu just picked up the Sky Piercer. Actually, I think this is the first time again I saw a Sky Piercer. But this time it's gonna, be, uh, gonna go on to Hayabusa. He's really confident that he knows he can go to those engages, get the kill without suffering any casualties. And, 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 that's, and that's easy right now for Andoryu, because again, you have two beefy frontliners in Shaknu. In Ryota, and so far, even if Chaknu keeps dying with two deaths, it's all worth it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Chaknu can afford to die if Heads kicks the big horseman. <laughs> that makes Omega a very happy camper. They can keep going. And the fact that his revitalize will just get better and better as the game goes longer, this gives TNC a big <laughs> budget need. Yeah. Invest in anti heal. Where's he gonna come from? Who's gonna buy the Sea Halberd? Who's gonna buy the Dominance Ice? Might be Kozen, though. He, he picked up the DHS, I think, around the six minutes, seven minutes in. So instead of completing the Trinity, he can go straight up Sea Halberd. Halberd. Yep, so he goes Golden Staff, uh, DHS. Corrosion Scythe. Oh, you, you let go of the Corrosion Scythe? Yeah, he picked up already the DHS. Well, I guess he's just not going to get the Sea Halberd. <laughs> oh, well, eventually he should. Okay, okay. Because again, it's so hard. You have a revitalized on Chaknu. Ryota, he got away with so much just by flickering away and then coming back while charging. You can't let that happen. Look at this. Grok EXP lane stats. Played four times currently in season 14 and has won three out of four times with a 75% win rate. Man, I'm not, I'm not sure who, it's ridiculous. who used the, the Grok for, as an yeah. XP. But one thing for sure is Ryota is rocking the Grok up to perfection almost. Look at that. Just really zoning out TNC, gaining ground control. It's easy for Omega for every single neutral objective. And talk about picking the right tool for the right job. Look at TNC, Escalera, Heads, Lancey, to some extent Kozin, yeah. besides Gage. All of them have to walk. All of them can't just jump to position. So that's why the Grok is so useful, especially coming out of the EXP lane, costing very little. Now Heads, Escalera living inside the pit. Slight advantage to Omega. Jomin and Doryu hitting away. Escalera. Down to a fourth of its health. Let's get out. Look at this angle. Here comes Total the king. Lui. Escalera, though, going for the back line. Here comes Jomin with his arm in force. Kozin has to use the blazing duet. Okay, Escalera just working on Andoryu, but Andoryu still gets the Lord. Kozin has to walk away. Escalera. And Escalera Ooh. suffering the Dominator's it's descent so. coming in from Okir. And there's the trade. Romer for Romer. Escalera for Chaknu, but Omega secures the Lord. Well set by Smart Omega. What did I tell you, Jose? What did I tell you? If Chaknu dies, that's okay. He did his job. 
Smart Omega leaned hard into it. What Joshua Mangilog bought for Omega was a clear path to the retribution. Yeah. And throughout that whole debacle, Joan could have really leaned into it, but no, they were focused. Again, this is the mark of a great team, yeah. a championship team in the making. Clear communications, a one-track mind. I think they were all saying, no, 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 Lord first, Lord first, in Tagalog, of course, but Lord first. Look at Endor, you're just really flexing right now. Their gold lead as he commits the Uwiki Shadow Kill on to four. He doesn't care. He doesn't care at this point. And now Omega has a Lord up top. 1v1 Kozen. between Kozen and Andoryu. Blazing Duet is there. Off cam kill! Does he have a quad oh, shadow? Will go. he go for it? Off cam oh, kill. No. Escalera's gonna fall down, but this time here comes Kazen. It's gonna be a 1v1 for the junglers. Oh. And the fracture will secure the kill onto Andoryu. Kozen softened him up for Kazen to finish the job. All this while, the push up top. All right, you know what? For once, in the mid game, the post power spike. TNC actually won a trade. Yeah. Finally, but this time what? Omega answers that right back. Not so fast. Okay, but TNC answers also as they take down a turret down bottom. And now TNC, this is what I like about TNC this time. They're making, they're not just playing as passive compared to their previous series. This time they're making sure that they have to force a trade and they are getting those trades. Okay, Escalera falls down, great. But Kazen was able to split push and even they have the, the lead in terms of turrets down bottom. Yep, and again, Andoryu dying prior actually reset the stacks building up on the Skypiercer. Sky yeah. So already, I think it's a one and a half worth of value victory for TNT in the trade. Now Smart Omega with a very small 200, 300 gold lead approaching a 13 minute mark. TNT can still count their blessings. Kazen getting his purple, the map not being as blue, and them getting some semblance of vision. Again, you talked about how uh, Ukir are able to clear bushes. Luckily, TNT has a way to do just the same. Throw a sacred, no, the first skill yeah. into a bush, check, right? Lancey, throw out your skills, nuke it, check. And the fact that Kozen is rocking the Purify mm -hmm. also is another way for Omega to add layers <laughs> to their setup. So it's not as simple to catch TNT. That's why that moment down bottom happened. It's because Omega have to choose their fights now. And yeah. this is a great way for TNT to actually recover, to put on the clutch. It's not just blind rage, just aggression, now they can finesse into better engages. Yeah. But TNC, again, execution really needs to be pinpoint here. We've seen a lot of times as Head starts things off with a good way of the Dragon, and then Escalera goes to the backline with the Implosion play, but the, the problem is their damage dealers get zoned out by Chatnu and That's Ryota. Right. That's right, so now they have to do more than that. They have to flip the switch, maybe Implosion first and then isolate with the kick. Yeah. But it's not gonna happen if you don't clear this bush. And look at this amazing, this immaculate river bush control by Smart Omega, now up by about a thousand gold. This does help though, the uh, Athena shield on Escalera. He's not gonna get easily bursted down by Ukir yeah. and can actually stand up against Chaknu and Jome. Yeah, he can actually go for the late Implosions even if his HP bar is almost non-existent. So this time TNC, Escalera, Heads, oh, needs a good pick off. Kozen goes in with a VMI. And Blazing Duet just to clear out the minions. And now Omega knows that a major resource has been expended. That's going to be the Purify of Kozen coming into this Lord fight. Ooh, he did pull out a Zaman Force too. Was able to lifesteal away from that wave. Sure, he can stay in. But without a Purify and waiting on the Blazing Duet, it's going to be tough for TNT to actually contest. Lord here approaching half health. There's the reset. Where's my Omega? Oh, heads gets a kick! Here comes the kick! But no reinforcements from the Phoenix army as Escalera and Kazen are down bottom. Looking for the angle though. I can feel the frustration brewing. Oh no, they're gonna get sandwiched here. Four members, five members. They there know Glorious Pathway plus a wild charge to bring down Kozen without the Purify. Now Escalera soaking up the damage. Implosion just to delay. Kazen on the other hand. What is he gonna do? He's gonna get the 1v1 up to Andoryu. But the Wiggy Shadow Kill is just gonna burst him down. And all of a sudden, the birthday boy is lonely on his big day. He's alone. A singular catch leading to a Jenga-like down spiral for TNC. A free objective, an eminent wipeout. Look at Smart Omega knocking down their base. That, that was such an aesthetic scene. Zaman Force and uh, the Glorious Pathway just connecting, making sure that they burst down the inhibitor even 
before the Lord marches into their base. This could be endable for the Barangay. Again, one step closer, one more shot to securing a playoff spot. Here comes the Lord. It's an enhanced Lord. TNT have time to deal with it. But Omega will work on setting up the inevitable. They're sinking up the waves down. Vaughn sinking up the waves up top and allowing TNC a moment to breathe. Ingan, the tables have turned. Earlier it was TNC who had the easier execution. Now it's Omega. They have so many AOE CCs, so many ways to activate their lineup. And TNC, they can only hope for a big Gundi hit Epic, so or a miracle style. implosion. Yeah. That's how they start up the fight. That's how they answer back and inside their base too. Escalera though has the flicker. So again, they can commit the flicker implosion play. But the problem is the sustain from Omega is just too much. Even Shackness still has the revitalized because the purifies are up for Jome and Ukir. And the problem is for TNC, Omega is a casting of skills. It doesn't even need to be pinpoint accurate. Just the fact that you, you can uh, cast the Glorious Pathway like this as he cuts off the Pathway of Heads there. Oh, brings him see. down, Shome working on the Birthday Boy. Three members left to defend for TNC. They have minions onto the bottom lane and no more inhibitor turrets left. Matter of time, Escalera oh. sets, but he's not going to catch anyone as they take him down. So Kozen weird. working on the minions and Doryu focuses on the <laughs> crystal. Shome wants to bring someone down as well. And uh -huh. Omega will get a game one win. The Barangay weathered through the storm, stuck it through a talk early to mid-game ramp, and eventually found themselves in a position where in